For this problem, we have a rod dangling down. We're told initially that the rod is pinned to the wall at the top of itself. So we have a rod pinned to the wall at the top of itself. So they're just saying right here, it's pinned at the top. And it says this is a negligible distance from the top. So that means they, they give a distance, a length for this rod of 1.40 meters. And basically what that means is that when we calculate the moment of inertia, we don't have to worry about the little excess that's sticking out. It's negligible. Okay. It also says that we give this an initial spin, and we're, we want to find the maximum angular velocity that it attains, assuming that it is just able to reach the top of the spin. So if we spin it around, and it just makes it to the top. So this is our initial state. And our final state is going to be up here. And I say initial and final because we're going to use conservation of energy. So uh, we, we might be initially given the little bat here, throwing it from here, but this is going to be our initial point because this is going to be the point that we have our maximum angular velocity. At the bottom we have our maximum angular velocity, at the top we have our minimum angular velocity. So I say this is our initial because this is our maximum, and this is our final because uh, that's the last point we want to look at for the point where it just makes it to the top. So the center of gravity of this thing is right there, which is going to be halfway because it's a rod, so it's going to be 0.7 meters, 0 0.70 meters, and same up here. It's going to be from here. 0.70 meters. Okay, so and now we've got to define our axes. Our rotation, so I'm going to say we're spinning it this way. So I'm going to call that positive, and I'm going to call the y direction positive upward. Okay, now I'm going to set my y datum at here. So I measure all my heights from there because I know initially my initial energy, my initial potential energy is going to be zero. That's why I set it like that. So all this is just getting set up, explaining what I'm going to do. Now let's actually do the problem. So we have this rod, we give a kick to and it spins around. We know that our energy is conserved. We know that because it says there's no friction in the problem and there's, there's no one else here to hit it again. It's just hit the first time. That's where the energy enters the system. And so we have no loss due to friction, so basically it just keeps going around and around. So energy initial equals energy final. So we're going to have potential energy plus rotational kinetic energy. So we have our kinetic energy initial. And it's all rotational because there's no translation in that. Potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Okay. I've chosen my initial point to be here. Actually, um, it basically has to be here because this is where we have the maximum, uh, the maximum, vo maximum angular velocity, which is one of our conditions for this problem. And at this point, our potential energy is going to be zero because I've chosen my datum at this point so that this height of the center of gravity is zero. So we have this potential energy, zero. Similarly, at the very top, it just makes it to the top, so our kinetic energy is zero. Final kinetic energy is zero. So initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to final potential energy. So kinetic energy for a rotational system is one half m omega call that initial squared equals r potential energy, which is, sorry, that's not M, that's I. In a rotational system, we don't, it's not mass we use, it's moment of inertia. And then we have MGH for potential energy. Now, I for a slender rod, which is what we have, is one-third ML squared. I is equal to one-third m l squared. Okay, so we can plug that in here, giving us one half of 
one third m l squared omega initial squared equals walk that off m c h. Okay, uh, what do we know in here? Uh, masses are actually going to divide out. We can divide m out over both sides. Uh, our length is going to be this 1.4 meters. That's how big the rod is. That's the length of our uh, rod to calculate our moment of inertia. Omega initial is actually what we're looking for. G is a constant. H is the height of this center of gravity above uh, this datum that we've placed. Now, I've put all these values in here so we can easily figure this out. We see this is exactly 0.7 plus 0.7 high. So our height is going to be equal to 1.40 meters. Coincidentally, exactly what our length is. Okay, so we'll be able to plug that in. So why don't I simplify this, solve for my omega i. Okay, so first, uh, um, 1 half times 1 third gives me 1 over 6. So I multiply the 6 to the top here, so I have 6, still have g times h and divide L squared, and then I take the square root of it all, 6GH over L squared, let me plug in the values, so I have 6G 9.81 meters per second squared, H is my 1.40 meters, I'll divide it by L squared, L is the same, 1.40 meters. That's squared, all under the square root sign. So if I plug all that in my calculator, I get an initial omega of 6.48 radians per second. And that is my final answer.